Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 5 of the F1 1999 career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the Monaco Grand Prix. Of course, if you missed out on the video uh, from Barcelona that went live a few days ago, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. Weirdly, it was actually my worst race of the season, despite the fact I felt I drove pretty well. Uh, we're still leading the championship, though. Four points clear of David Coulthard, but maybe just maybe Mika Hakkinen has worked out how to drive a Formula 1 car again. McLaren, eight points ahead of Jordan in the Constructors' Championship. We have still got a massive lead over the Ferrari team as well in P3, or should they be called Scuderia Schumacher at this point in this series. But of course, yeah, if you're new around here as well, Please do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed. We're trying to hit 130,000 subscribers at the moment. And yeah, let's head then back to the jewel in the Formula 1 crown. Well, there is no more important qualifying session here at the Monaco Grand Prix. Unless, of course, your name is Olivier Panis. But come on then, we've got to try and get a good tidy lap in. I really do feel like this car and both us and Stewart should have a good opportunity here. Because, uh, of course, straight line speed means very, very little around the Monte Carlo streets. It's all about just trying to keep the car planted, keep it stable through the corners and in the braking zones as well there. As you can see, so far it's myself and Giancarlo Fisichella trading the top time. We're trying to navigate our way through the chicane. You really cannot attack that curbing through that, otherwise it actually costs you time because the car is bouncing around. But to back, you don't even have to downshift through there. It is just all over the show as we try and navigate our way then through the final couple of corners. We are still mighty close with one of the Schumachers through the Raskas we go and into Anthony Noggs. We need to try and get a nice run at that final turn. I think we're just going to miss out on pole position though. It is P3 on the grid for the Monaco Grand Prix. I really thought there that was going to be it. Well, there we go then. It is the Schumacher brothers locking out the pole position here on the Monte Carlo streets. They've got a huge opportunity this weekend to try and pick up a good result. But like I said, Stuart and Jordan, we're both looking pretty good around here. Both teams going quicker than McLaren then. So Mika Hakkinen only P7 ahead of his teammate David Coulthard. Um, for some reason, Daniel Ricciardo, sometimes he's in this mod, sometimes he's not. Uh, Damon Hill clearly is only running in a half season. Um... But yeah, that's a little bit strange. Um, but yeah, P3 on the grid though for the Monaco Grand Prix. Could we possibly win this one? Quickly though, before we get into this video, I want to thank all of the names you see on your screen. Without their continued support of the channel, none of the work we do here would be possible. And if you want to get your name featured on this list, you can click the join button or click the Patreon link down in my description below and support the channel from just £1 a month. You will also get access to weekly updates about everything going on behind the scenes and also occasionally some early pre reviews on videos so yeah a massive thank you to my youtube members and my patreon supporters and let's get back to the video A proper road race and in the true meaning of the word. That was how Mr Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but still we race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean Sea. There's no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. We're on the French Riviera once more this weekend at the two mile long Circuit de Monaco. The cars will climb around 40 metres up the hill, past the casino, and then descend downwards towards the harbour through Sector 2. It's a very short run from pole position to the first of the 19 corners at Sandovot. And don't expect to see much overtaking here today. Well, here we go then, ready for 39 gruelling laps of the Monaco Grand Prix. This is a real challenge like no other, uh, mainly because on this game, of course, the cars are so difficult to handle, and if you as much as look at a wall, uh, then likely you are going to lose a wheel. 
Four races down, though, I wouldn't suggest that either of the Schumacher brothers are our big championship threat, uh, but we know Michael, at the very least, you cannot count out until he is mathematically out of a title fight. But ready then on the grid for the five red lights here for the Monaco Grand Prix. It is lights out, and away we go. There is Ralph Schumacher, as he seems to get the better start than his teammate there. We've done all right, actually. Not even going to lose a place down at turn one. As will Ralph be able to make it happen then? As we're going to watch those two Scarlet Ferraris navigate their way up the hill. Surely, Ralph Schumacher on the inside as they make it into Massene is going to be looking for this one there. But still, Michael Schumacher won't give up on it there. Ralph Schumacher around the outside will go, though, and into the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix, and I believe this will be the first laps he's led all season then. I'm staggered we haven't lost any places off the start here. It looks like Fisichella and Magnussen have moved past Rubens Barrichello as yellow flags out temporarily. Normally you would assume it's just going to be a roadblock, but in, well, with these cars, it could be a pileup on lap one, as we've seen a couple of times prior to now. Of course, Spain, easily the best weekend for reliability so far this season. Um, but yeah, you can see Giancarlo though up into P4, so that's really good for us then. We might have a rear gunner uh, throughout the rest of the afternoon. Of course, we've had quite a few battles with our teammates so far in this campaign. As we navigate our way then through the final couple of corners of lap one, we saw McLaren struggling qualifying. Will they have more pace come race day Sunday? But how quick are those Ferraris going to be? And are we going to be able to keep up with them there? Well, it is still very, very early doors then in this Grand Prix. But like I said, Stuart and Jordan, we've both got a huge opportunity here because really this does not play uh, into McLaren and Ferrari's wheelhouse. The high downforce is actually where we've been very, very competitive with those big teams early on in this season. Um, but yeah, we're probably pushing Schumacher's along, the both Schumacher's along, uh, early on in this race. You can see just how much I'm trying to fight the car, though, still. Um, but Fisichel is kind of hanging close-ish. Magnussen, though, is definitely dropping away. So I said how we're practically pushing along the two Ferraris. Uh, that would imply that I'm trying to look for a way past. Definitely not the case at the moment. They've got probably the same, if not slightly more pace than me. I'm just happy to be keeping up with them. Well, team already then trying to suggest that we go a little bit deeper into the Grand Prix before we make the switch. So our back end trying to tip us into the wall at the top of the hill. We basically didn't need to turn throughout that entire left-hander. I mean, what do you do if you're Jean Todd at the moment? You've got both your drivers fighting for the lead at the Monaco Grand Prix. You know Michael Schumacher. Yeah, he might be better about it because this is his brother. But you know he will not be happy just sat staring at the gearbox of the other car. Do you bring one of them in early? I mean, do you risk someone getting undercut like Kimi Raikkonen back in 2017? I don't know. But either way, I mean, if yeah, Eddie Jordan, I'm hoping he's cooking up a strategy plan back at the team. Because uh, we want to try and find a way past these two. See, that always is the corner that we can slightly get a run on Michael. Every time by the end of it, he's absolutely still carrying more speed than me. But every time, yeah, we can just put alongside him out onto that little straight. Because, oh, we've already got someone out of the Grand Prix, and that's a VSC. Well, I believe this is Pedro De La Rosa then slowly grinding to a halt as he makes his way down the hill. Engine has expired on that Sauber car, and he will be very upset with that. I know the VSC doesn't cost you too much on this game, but we're going to take the opportunity then to try and peel into the pit lane. We don't know how many other chances we're going to get this afternoon as both for our result to stay out. Um, but really, yeah, the question for us is, will we come out in clear air or are we going to have to try and fight our way through more traffic towards the end of this race? Um, like I said, the VSC doesn't cost you much, um, but it does cost you a little bit potentially around a track like this. There, so there we go. DRS is now re-enabled. So really for us, it is just a question of where are we going to come back out? Hill and Frentzen at the bottom of the top 10. And we have come out in clear air then. And actually a fair automatic clear air. So I reckon Frentzen then might be holding up a bit of a train further behind. And we've come out just five seconds behind Hakkinen. Oh, there we go. Uh, Giancarlo also into the pit lane. So that's going to give us hopefully a better idea then of where everyone else is. I mean, we shouldn't have been jumped by Fisichella. 
to make our way through Anthony Nugs. There's Rubens Barrichello as well. And there is Michael Schumacher. I believe that's Michael anyway. And we have got the jump on one of them then. So that is absolutely critical then at this stage of the GP. Not only have we got a jump, but we've got about a two second lead as well. So hopefully the other one's going to be into the pit lane at the end of this lap. So I don't... There's no way really of telling unless I look at the helmets. I believe it was Michael that has peeled into the pit lane then. So maybe Ferrari trying to let their darling get the undercut on his own brother. Uh, but where will Ralph re-emerge? We got Ralph Schumacher into the pit lane then. And David Coulthard, I would only guess, is going to follow. A little bit of a wobble as we make our way through the final couple of corners. But has this undercut work? Has capitalising on the VSC potentially made the difference here as well? Try and get the throttle down out of the final corner. You nudge that curb and it is not good. There is Ralph though. And a new fastest lap of the day as we storm to the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix. Now we've got to try and hold on to it as I think Ralph has stayed ahead of Michael. Oh, Giancarlo's into the pit lane again. So I'm going to guess he's had an instant with someone else. Unfortunately, the replay cameras won't let me go and find that one. Giancarlo Fisichella is having a nightmare suddenly. But what I'm looking at now is whether a two-stop's going to be viable because Shinji Nakano and Damon Hill are slowing down everyone further behind so much that we might be able to re-emerge up in like P4 here if we were to pit later on in the day. We are still inching away from the Schumachers at the moment, but not by much. I must admit, these hards don't feel nice at all. Well, I'm just looking at the way the gaps are moving around at the moment. I reckon if we can get that gap to Demon Hill, well, to 25 seconds. You've lost one of the gears. Say again, you have lost access to one of the gears. Well, that's certainly going to help me out. We've lost fourth gear here, which is very, very useful. And apparently, gearbox wear in 1999, even worse than it was in 1998. Are we now going to be able to keep Ralph Schumacher at bay? Is Damon Hill into the pit lane anyway? So that eliminates a two-stop. I must admit, as gears go, fourth is quite a useful one around this venue. So we're going to have to be really, really careful now. Basically change a gearbox every other race then between now and the end of the season, if they're going to take that much of a beating in this series. We're not even halfway through this GP, and I think the second half is going to feel a whole lot longer. To be fair, we're only running less than a second away from my PB. What worries me is how long it's been. Oh, there we go. I was about to say, we haven't had fourth gear come back yet, but yeah, 20 laps still to go of this GP, and normally one gearbox problem will lead to another. There we go. First lap, we've got the gearbox back and immediately we're going to set a new fastest lap of the afternoon. I guess we've got to keep doing that. Build up a little bit of a buffer whilst the gearbox is working. And then just prepare to lose it again as what on earth has happened further back? Jan Magnussen, P4 now, is 30 seconds behind. Well, it worries me then that we're basically only halfway through this Grand Prix uh, and we're already about to lap Nick Heidfeld here. Clearly, oh, the pace difference is quite extreme. How many cars are we going to lap by the end of this? And now we have got an engine warning light that has just popped up as well. What is that about? That is surely going to be the gearbox wear. Yep, there we go. Well, Heifeld would garner the nickname Quick Nick throughout a lot of his career. Clearly that cannot be said on his first outing at the Monaco Grand Prix. He is the first car to get lapped. Come on then, Rossit. It feels like I'm having to do a lot of lapping of the cars in recent races. But Rossit will be the next one navigated. It is always quite astounding when you think to yourself how quickly Jacques Villeneuve's F1 career has absolutely crumbled around him. World champion less than two years ago. Now he's battling for P17 and arrows. And yeah, seemingly getting laps on quite the regular there. Marc Genet, um, yeah, he was kind of the backmarker bandit, wasn't he, last season? I kind of dubbed him. Clearly not as strong this year in his Minardi. But we are slowly moving through all these real sort of true back markers. I want to know where Fisichella is though in terms of track position here because he was a long way behind us uh, when he had to pit for a second time so I wonder if we're going to lap him today. Um, whilst we're at it, thank you Mark Genet. Just watch me Casalo trying to chuck that thing around as we almost put it in the wall. That car is just sliding around all over the show. Um, but yeah, we have now reached two-thirds distance of the Monaco Grand Prix. We haven't had a second gearbox problem yet, 
And the Schumacher's now a 7 and 8 seconds behind. Thank you, Jos Verstappen, though. Oh, no, he sees immediately as we try and get up into fourth. Just suddenly, the amount of talk we've had absolutely gone. Also makes braking very difficult because you've got nowhere near as much engine brake. Ten laps to go, then, at the Monaco Grand Prix. Fourth gear is back once again. Wonderful. I must admit, surely, by the basic laws of mathematics, don't quite know how the mechanical issues work on this game, as that was lucky. Um, I wouldn't mind if we lose sixth gear, because uh, we never touch it around here in this car. As purple sector three immediately. What have we done to the suspension? I didn't know that was possible. So we need to be even more careful with the car then. Um, I can't see any structural damage to it, but clearly we've got to be more gentle. Oh, I think I can see a yellow speck in front of me. There we go, Giancarlo Fisichella, I think, is running it. About unlucky P13 then. So an utter nightmare for my teammate. Who on earth is he pushing along? So looking at it then, Fisichella is stuck staring at the Williams of Heinz Howard Frentzen. Well, maybe Jacques Villeneuve hasn't made the worst choice in the world by leaving that team. Because that car is an absolute dog so far this season then. But Fisichella, once again, two weekends in a row... He's been stuck behind Heinz Harold. Are we potentially going to be able to help our teammate out by trying... Whoa, Frinson! Uh, clearly, he saw what the tactic was there, and there's a little bit of contact between us. I think I've just lost a tiny bit of our front wing. What is Frinson doing? He won't back out of it. And finally, we've got round him. But it has come at a great cost to our car performance. Four laps to go then, and for the first time today... It's really starting to feel like this could happen here. We've closed in on Alexander Wurtz. And he is going to peel out of the way. Maybe that's the last car we're going to see before the chequered flag. Do not hit a wall now. Oh, oh, we've lost Mika Hakkinen late on in the day. What's happened? Mika Hakkinen then making his way in towards the final couple of corners then. And just with one lap to go, the engine is going to expire in his McLaren car then. And Hakkinen is out of the Grand Prix here, a crazy end for Paul Mika, and suddenly that's one of our big championship rivals not scoring. Well, Michael Schumacher then, he's had decent pace today, but it has not been enough to really challenge the front runners here. Myself and Ralph Schumacher really have been in a bit of our own battle today. But as we make our way around this final lap then, will Shinji Nakano let me by? Will we be able to hold off from a charging Ralph? As that gap continues to come down, we'll make our way around Shinji. And will we be able to get a lap up on Rubens Barrichello as well there? I'm sure Eddie Jordan is sat very, very nervously in the pit box at the moment. Jordan, they were such an incredible underdog story, but they never were able to win the Monaco Grand Prix. But as we make our way around the final couple of corners, there is going to be a party tonight through Anthony Nogues one final time, despite car issues... It is going to be P1 at the Monaco Grand Prix, baby. We are here to fight. So, this is not normally where I'd interject in one of these videos, um, but it's when I realised we had a minor problem with this mod. For whatever reason, it would not finish the Monaco Grand Prix, and I have no idea why. Uh, because this was the second race I'd done around this venue. Um, yeah, it would just I left it for a good 20 minutes, and the game was just circling around the track. So, unfortunately, we aren't going to win the Monaco Grand Prix. I'm going to have to try and sim through this weekend, uh, and hopefully the game is going to return to normal, I believe, next time out in Montreal. So, a massive, massive heartbreak. Uh, in the end of this video and certainly not the way I wanted the Monaco Grand Prix to end. But yeah, like I said, I think it's only been a temporary issue uh, with the game for some reason this weekend. Um, it's got a little bit confused, but of course, yeah, if we can't get it to work in Canada, um, then obviously there won't be a video from there. So yeah, real, real shame to end the video like this. But thank you all so much for watching nonetheless. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed, and hopefully we'll return ready for the Canadian Grand Prix.